Hi everyone, it's Laura here and in today's video I'm going to share with you how to create a fun pick a book card using SVG files by scrapbook.com and stamps by Lonfon. The SVG file bundle that I'll be using today is called Advent Tree. It is available on the scrapbook.com store and I used it together with my scan and cut machine to cut some Bristol Smooth cardstock by Strathmore. I have here three panels, one is a solid tree, another is a tree with some square windows cut out and the third one is the one that I'm holding right now. I actually cut this by accident because the lines that I cut on the windows were supposed to be score lines but I haven't learned how to do that with my scan and cut machine so instead of cutting windows that you can open and create a peekaboo element on your card, I actually trimmed out the squares. So I decided to pull them out as I'm doing right now on screen and I'll be using it to create some thickness in my tree and also to help me position the images that I will use as inserts of my advent calendar but you will see everything later on in the video and everything will be clear if it isn't right now. With other files in the Advent Tree SVG bundle, I also cut out some stars and the numbers that I'll be using to decorate the Advent Tree, which I'm keeping in a bowl because they are pretty tiny and I don't want to lose them and figure out that I'm missing some later on in the card making process. And then I can go ahead and start adding some color to my trees. For that, I'll be using Distress Oxides and my blending brushes by scrapbook.com. I decided to use blending brushes rather than blending foams because they are a little bit more delicate and I didn't want to risk ruining those peekaboo windows that I have on my advent tree. And also with blending brushes it is really easy to achieve a very soft blend and a nice transition between colors. I'm going to use the same colors on all three trees. I started with cracked pistachio that I used to coat the entire panels and then I'm going to add some shading first with Lucky Clover and then with Pine Needles. And I really like this color combination for Christmas cards. It's not quite the traditional Christmas green but I find it nice and fresh and I like the fact that it's a little bit more blue because of that cracked pistachio and the Lucky Clover. I added some final shading with pine needles just on the very edges of each individual panel and then I decided to create a little bit more interest by adding some droplets. I pressed the ink pads on my glass mat, I activated the inks with some water and then I'm going to use a paintbrush to pick up the inks and create some small droplets on the panels. I used the same colors of Distress Oxides that I used for my ink blending and I'm going to keep adding droplets until I feel I have a nice coverage. And then I decided that I also wanted a little bit of sparkle because this after all is a Christmas card. So I picked up my pearl colors, these are by Ganzai Tambi and they have a metallic finish. I picked up the green color in the palette, I activated it with water and I used it to add a few more droplets to my trees and I also mixed it with some of the Distress Oxides that I have on my glass mat right now to create a different shade of metallic green and add even more interest and variation to these trees. For the star I did some quicking blending using again my scrapbook.com blending brushes and distress oxides in squeezed lemonade and mustard seed and then I moved on and started working on my images. I went through my stash of lawn font stamps and I looked for tiny images that would fit in the advent calendar windows and that would make sense for an advent calendar. I mounted the stamps in my Mini Misty and I'm stamping them with scrapbook.com premium hybrid black ink on some more Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'll be doing some coloring with my Zik Clean Color Real Brush Markers. The sets that I used are Holiday Helpers, Sweet Christmas and Frosty Fairy Friends and then I also used these images from the For You Dear stamp set. I actually will end up using only the two bears on the final card but I'll have this cute reindeer ready for another project. 
As I mentioned, for my coloring I used Zicklin Color Real Brush Markers. These are water-based markers that you can blend with each other or with water. And for today I decided to only use the markers directly on paper without blending them with water, because I wanted a nice and bright result. I'm using two markers per color, so I can do a little bit of shading, but I'm also keeping the coloring pretty quick and simple. The color palette is also pretty limited and I have some teal blues, some pink reds and some warm yellows. And then I have a couple of browns for the doll's hair and the bear. I stamped each image twice and I'm going to mix up the colors a little bit so that there is some variation. So for example, I colored the heart pink right now and the other heart will be blue. And you will see what I mean later on once all the images are colored. I'm actually not going to show you the entire coloring process to keep the video a little bit shorter, but I wanted to let you know that as I am recording this voiceover, there is a sale on scrapbook.com. Items in the handmade gifts, Christmas and holiday categories are 20% off and today is the last day to take advantage of this so I thought I'd let you know in case you're interested and scrapbook.com exclusives are also on sale and these include the blending brushes that I showed before, the hybrid ink that I used to stamp my images and also the SVG files that I'm using today. There will be links in the description box down below if you're interested. And after I'm done coloring this little present here, I'm going to show you all the images once they're colored. And you can see that duplicate images were colored with different color schemes. I then moved on and started coloring the bears and the reindeer, but I'm going to just show you the coloring for this bear here. The other one is the same and as I said I ended up not using the reindeer on the final card. I cut out all my images and off camera I placed them on my advent tree. So I have the solid tree on the background and the one with the windows that are completely cut out laid on top. It's not glued down yet, but I used that as a guide to place all the smaller images. And then I went ahead and started gluing them. I'm using Nuvo Glue and this Pick Me Up tool, which is very, very useful when you deal with small images and embellishments too. As you can see, some of the images are a little bit larger than the windows and I'm not going to worry about them right now. I am first going to adhere everything that fits while I have the guide still laid on top of my base tree. And then once that is done, I can remove the panel that I have on top and glue down the larger images. I have a visual guide now because I have the smaller images already glued down and I'm going to lay over the panel with the cutout windows to make sure that I actually placed everything correctly. And this is how I solved the quote-unquote issue of the larger images for the advent tree. I'm going to go ahead until I fill all the spaces. I'm also making sure that I don't have two images that are the same one next to each other and I'm trying to switch up the colors a little bit so that it all looks nice and visually pleasing. And then before actually assembling the advent tree, I'm going to create the score lines on those windows on the front panel. You should be able to do that with your electronic cutting machine, but as I said, I'm not extremely experienced with my scan and cut machine yet, so this is the solution I found. I used my score tool, a T-square ruler, and I'm scoring the lines on top of a foam pad because it is easier to actually score the lines if you have a little bit of a softer surface to stand on rather than if you do it on a hard surface like a glass mat or your desk. Once all the lines were scored, I went ahead and adhered everything together. I made sure not to put any glue behind the windows because we want to be able to open them. And then I moved on and started adhering the numbers on each window. 
I'm using my EK Success reverse tweezers to pick up the numbers, which makes it much much more easy to handle them rather than having to pick them up with your hands. And then I'm gluing them to my tree using some Nouveau Deluxe adhesive. Another thing I could have done, but I never think about this in advance, is to use some double-sided adhesive sheets behind the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock that I used. And this way all these numbers would be stickers instead, but the Nouveau Deluxe adhesive worked fine in the end. Now this may seem a little bit tedious, but actually it came along quite fast. I was listening to an audiobook, actually I was listening to one of the Harry Potter ones. I started recently and I'm really enjoying doing that while I create my cards. And I have to say that the end result is totally worth it because I think this card turned out really cute and it's really fun with this advent calendar. At this point it was time to work on the card background and I left it for last because I wasn't sure at the beginning the kind of look I wanted to go for so I waited until my advent tree was completely ready and that way I could have a better vision of what I wanted my final card to look like. I opted for a square card base that is cut to 6 by 12 inches and scored at 6 inches, so the card front measures 6 by 6 inches. It is a little bit larger than the standard A2 size, but this way I didn't have to shrink the advent calendar cut files too much because otherwise the windows would have been too tiny for my images to fit and also those numbers would have been very very small. I decided to do some ink blending on my card base too and I used picked raspberry, festive berries and aged mahogany. Again I'm doing ink blending with my blending brushes and like I did for the tree I decided to add some interest to the background by creating some droplets using again those same colors of distress oxides that I had on the background and I also added some sparkle here by bringing in those pearl colors by Ganzai Tambi. This time I used the red and I first diluted it with some water and added it to the background, again creating some droplets with it and I also then decided to bring this silver color to bring even more light and some lighter shades in the background. I waited for those droplets to dry and then I adhered the advent tree to the center of my card front using again Nouveau Deluxe adhesive. I used some foam squares to raise those two bears that look like they're peeking out from the tree. And then for my sentiment I used stamps from the Holiday Helpers stamp set by Lon Fon. I stamped the word Merry and Christmas doing some masked stamping because I wanted enough space to create two separate labels from the words in this greeting. So I stamped first the word Christmas and then on a separate corner of the cardstock the word Merry and I used my guillotine trimmer by Tonic Studios to create two tiny strips around them. I glued them down to the front of my card, adhering them at an angle to create a little bit of interest on the design and then I figured out that the look wasn't as balanced so I needed an extra sentiment to the right part of the card front. So what I did is I took another of the greetings in the Holiday Helper stamp set I stamped it again with black ink on Bristol Smooth cardstock and I trimmed off the part of the sentiment that reads to you. I glued that to the right portion of my card front so that the entire greeting reads Merry Christmas to you and the design is a little bit more balanced. And here is the final result. I think this card turned out really cute and it's so fun with this advent calendar. I don't think there will be somebody who will not be amazed by receiving a card like this. If you liked the card and enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below and to leave a thumbs up as this helps my channel a lot and also I really love reading all your comments. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe for more card making and paper crafting inspiration. Thank you all so much for stopping by and have a great day.